Shalom, family. Shalom, Mishpaka. And this is your host, Brian Anthony. Binya with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Your host, Brian Anthony. Binya with Beyond Babbitt reporting for duty. Reporting to you live from behind enemy lines. Reporting to you live from the United States of Israel. Shalom, family. Well, guys, I got a treat for you guys today. I'm going to be coming out of this book. For Ezra. For Ezra and to Baruch. But uh, like I said, I've been ordering a lot of books and uh, I do have duplicates. So, so this is. Um, for Ezra starts it's basically it, it contains um, a lot of second Esdras in it but it's an expanded version so if you have the book of Esdras and the Apocrypha that's only the abbreviated portion that's the cliff note compared to this one for Ezra and they took out of course they always, they're always hiding things and they they uh, put it under a different name and you got to buy it separately and then oh, it's in a, other compilations and collections and you know so so it's over here guys and uh, we're going to just read a little bit of it to get a blessing out of it for these last days to get some understanding so we can be at peace so we can prosper and uh, have posterity and prosperity in these last days and this last hour and that our joy may be full. Okay? Hallelujah. All minds clear. So if you have your pens and pencils, uh, get your books out. If you have it, it is not in your 66 book skeleton Bible. Um, these you, you have to spend the money, guys. Get the extras. Get everything that they've taken away and hidden because... You know, the Bible, uh, the book of Daniel speaks about in the last days, people will go to and fro and knowledge will be increased. Well, the knowledge is being increased because the books are being released. And um, there's a lot of things that they uh, don't listen to because, of course, they put their little notes in it. You know, that's what Schofield is, how he helped spread the rapture theory, the rapture doctrine. But by putting it in the notes of the book, when that you know, it's not in the, the writings of the book. But uh, we can't pay attention to their, because they try to insert, well, we don't know who wrote this, and this was written between that date and this day. Y'all, it's not for y'all to understand. Um, so line upon line, precept upon precept, line upon line, precept upon precept. Uh, when in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So this is how we smell it out. We have the Ruach HaKadosh, so we know if it's authentic or not. And uh, we, don't, we don't need to y'all to tell us, oh, it was wrote, man, I've seen some dates. Oh, it, this was written either 100 B.C. up to 700 A.D. Oh, that's a big gap. That's a really big gap. Yeah, so, um, and they say that everything they took out is, is Gnostic or it's not God-inspired. Y'all was hiding stuff. You're still hiding stuff. That's why you separated for as for Ezra from Second Esdras, and um, and just charging again and again and again for the same stuff, just giving a little bit more each time. So let's go ahead and read some of it and uh, get some understanding here. Okay, so let's see. Let's see how we're we gonna do this. Get this adjusted right up. Get it adjusted right here, guys. I didn't want to turn on this light on this thing, but I may have to. The pages are kind of tight on it right here. Let's see. So let's see. Well, let's see what it looks like if I turn this thing on. It does look better, doesn't it? Okay, so it says. I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start at the top. 
uh, for Ezra chapter three, one, and this one starts at three, one. I do have another version that actually starts with a, uh, I believe it's a chapter one. It has more chapters than this one. It says, okay. In the 30th year after the destruction of our city, I, Salilfil, who am also called Ezra, was in Babylon. I was troubled as I lay on my bed, and my thoughts welled up in my heart. Because I saw the desolation of Zion and the wealth of those who lived in Babylon, my spirit was greatly agitated, and I began to speak anxious words to the Most High and said, O sovereign Lord, didst thou not speak at the beginning when thou didst from the earth and that without help and didst command the dust and it gave thee Adam a lifeless body, yet he was the workmanship of thy hands and thou didst breathe into him the breath of life and he was made alive in thy presence. And thou didst lead him into the garden, which thy right hand, thy right hand, see, our Yah is a right hand lie. Uh, our Yah is a right hand Elohim. And remember, Yahshua is seated at the right hand right now, the Father. So we know who, who did this, his right hand. You get it? Okay. The word is the right hand. <laughs> you get it? Okay, alive in the presence, and thou didst lead him into the garden which thy right hand had planted before the earth appeared. Page is kind of tight, guys. So, so. And it says here, and thou didst lay upon him one commandment, but he transgressed it, and immediately thou didst appoint death for him and for his descendants. From him there sprang nations and tribes, peoples and clans without number. And every nation walked after its own will. See, this is what we read in Genesis, guys. And did ungodly things before thee and scorned thee, and thou didst not hinder them. But, at, but again, in its time, thou didst bring the flood upon the earth. See? Yeah, he just, it, it got to get to a point to where he's a, you know, let it build up and then he does it. But again, in his time, thou didst bring the flood upon the earth and the inhabitants of the world and destroy them. And the same fate befell them. As death came upon Adam, so the flood upon them. But thou didst leave one of them. So who was left behind? Noah was left behind. Right, everybody else was taken. Him and his family were left behind. Pray you left behind. That's the pattern. Right? But thou didst leave one of them, Noah, with his household and all the righteous who have descended from him. So the righteous were left. Right, Him and his three sons. And they all started off being righteous. And then they start going wicked again. Okay. Let's see now. 313, when those who dwelt on earth began to multiply, they produced children and peoples and many nations, and Israel wasn't one of them. And again, they began to be more ungodly than were their ancestors. They started it all over again. And when they were committing iniquity before thee, thou didst choose for thyself one of them, whose name was Abraham. See, he never chooses the multitude. He usually chooses one. He chose Noah. He chose Abraham. Okay. And thou didst love him. And to him only didst thou reveal the end of the times secretly by night. Now, this is Ezra saying that, the prophet Ezra. So that's before the New Testament. That's before um, Peter, Paul, John, James. Uh, before Yahshua came and was birthed on the earth. 
So he said it, it was revealed. Now we know um, Enoch was before Abraham. And, uh, but he definitely looks like he chose Abraham. And he said, um, so he said he revealed it secretly to him by night. So again, like in the last video we did, um, and uh, Abraham just said, no of a surety. Surety said the darkness came upon Abraham and said, no of a surety about his descendants. This is before he had his son that they were going to be 400 years. You know about the 400 year prophecy. See, when you read it in the book of Genesis, it makes it look like it was only, you know, lasted about 30 seconds, 60 seconds. But then that's why we have the um, apocalypse of Abraham. That's the revelation of Abraham. That pretty much that whole book. And it's also a testament of Abraham attached to it. But yeah, that whole book takes place during that little piece of the chapter of Genesis. And, and just like the book of Enoch, that whole book pretty much takes place uh, during the little chapter of Genesis 6. So, I mean, when you think about it, Yahshua said, the, the, the book says that everything that Yahshua did wasn't even recorded in the book because it's all the books in the world can contain it. Yahshua said, the works that I do, you can do them, and greater works than these shall you do. So it's a lot of stuff out there, guys, that it's real stuff that just, just that couldn't fit. Just think how big the Bible would be. Look how big it is now, and most people who believe ain't even read the whole thing yet. And if they have, they don't even understand it. Just think about all the rest of them. You know, my library is getting pretty large with Scripture, guys. And um, Anyway, that's my little diatribe. So let's keep going here. And it says, um, so he taught him secretly by night. I just want to expound on that. Uh, that, uh, you know, because Abraham was caught up into the Hashemayim, to the firmaments, and uh, was told some things and taught some things. Why not? The friend of God, you know? So, um, and at this time, he said, he taught him secretly by night. Okay, uh, chapter 3, verse 15. Thou didst make him with an everlasting covenant. They made him with an everlasting covenant. And promise him that thou wouldst never forsake his descendants. And thou gavest to him Isaac. And to Isaac thou gavest Jacob and Esau. And thou didst set apart Jacob for thyself. But Esau... Thou didst reject. And Jacob became a great multitude. Now Jacob is Israel. And when thou didst lead him, oh, I'm sorry, when thou didst lead his descendants out of Egypt, thou didst bring them to Mount Sinai. Thou didst bend down the heavens. That's what he did for his children, guys. Thou didst bend down the heavens. Shake the earth and move the world and make the deaf to tremble and trouble the universe. Trouble the whole universe at his presence for his kids. So he was doing kingdom business, talking to his kids. And thy glory passed through the four gates of fire and earthquake and wind and ice to give the Torah to the descendants of Jacob. So we know that um, the number for earth is four, right? North, east, south, and west. And here they, they uh, say, and thy gate, and then thy glory pass through the four gates of fire, the earthquake and the wind and ice to give to the Torah, to the descendants of Jacob and thy commandment to the posterity of Israel. Yet thou didst not take away from them their evil heart, so that thy Torah might bring forth fruit in them. Okay, that's what we want to bring forth fruit. For the first Adam, burdened with an evil heart, transgressed and was overcome, as were also all who were descended from him. Thus, the disease became permanent. The Torah was in the people's heart along with the evil root, but, but what was good departed and the evil remained. So the times passed 
and the years, I'm sorry, and the years were completed. And thou didst raise up for thyself a servant named David, and thou didst command him to build a city for thy name. This is where we are now, guys. And so I, I've, I've kind of come to the conclusion, guys, that, um, you know, a lot of us aren't going to see the completion of this unless he shortens the days. If the curse is a hundred year curse, you know, I'm already um, in my forties. Um, he gave us 120, you know, so I probably won't get to be 140 and, and get to see this to completion, but the generation that comes after. So we're building now, setting the foundation unless he shortens the days, but um, we can get it started. Um, the United States of Israel becoming autonomous. Uh, and as he takes down the other nations, we build up, we remain righteous and uh, he can do it even quicker. Okay, so, so let's start again here, 322. Interesting, 322. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Thus, the disease became permanent. The Torah was in the people's hearts along with the evil root. But what was good departed and the evil remained. So the times passed and the years were completed and thou didst raise up for thyself a servant named David and thou didst command him to build a city for thy name and in it to offer thee oblations for what is thine. This was done for many years, but the inhabitants of the city transgressed and everything doing as Adam and all the descendants had done. Adam and all his descendants had done. For they also were burdened with the evil heart. So thou didst deliver the city into the hands of thine enemies. Then I said to my heart, are the deeds of those who inhabit Babylon any better? Is that why? She has gained dominion over Zion. Yeah, he was asking God some tough questions, man. You know, like why you, you know, they were worse than us, God. And some, like I said, some of this is in Second Esdras, but uh, this is you get all of it here. For when I came here, I saw ungodly deeds without number, and my soul has seen many sinners during these thirty years, and my heart failed me. For I have seen how thou dost endure those who sin and has spared those who act wickedly and has destroyed thy people and has preserved thine enemies, thy enemies, and has not shown to anyone how, how thy way may be comprehended. Are the deeds of Babylon better than those of Zion? That's where we are now, guys. We got to straighten up first. So we get right spiritually and then the physical deliverance actually comes. And that's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's what we're seeing take place. We can't lighten up. We got to tighten up. Or has another nation known thee besides Israel? That's 332. Chapter 332. Chapter 3, verse 32. Or has another nation known thee besides Israel? Or what tribe? has so believed thy covenants as Jacob. Yet their reward has not appeared and their labor has borne no fruit. For I have traveled widely among the nations and have seen that they abound in wealth, though they are unmindful of thy commandments. See, this is how we got to pray right now in this hour to let him remember what he said to us. How he gonna remove the, the, uh, the wicked, the enemy, and the righteous are going to flourish and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. How long, O oh great father? This is how we got to do. You know, it's his promises, not ours. We, we just got to make sure we're doing everything right because, yeah, you don't want to make him mad because he'll spank you. <laughs> okay, so um, verse 34. Now, therefore, weigh in a balance our iniquities and those of the inhabitants of the world. And so it will be found which way the turn of the scale will incline. 
when have the inhabitants of the earth not sinned in thy sight? Or what nation has kept thy commandments so well? Thou mayest indeed find individual men who have kept thy commandments, but nations thou wilt not find. The angel answered, okay, verse 4, one, chapter 4, 1. Then the angel that had been sent to me, the angel had been sent to me or assigned to me. Then the angel that had been sent to me, whose name was Uriel, answered and said to me, your understanding is quite confounded regarding this world. And do you wish to comprehend the way of the most high? Then I said, yes, my Lord. And he replied to me, I have been sent to show you three problems. If you can solve one of them, for me, I also will show you the way you desire to see and will teach you why thy heart is evil. Ooh, it's like Jeremiah. The heart is wicked, is evil. Ezra, my questions are about this world. Check it out. I said, speak on, my Lord. And he said to me, go away from me, the weight of fire. Measure for me a measure of wind or call back for me the day that is past. I answered and said, who of those that have been born can do this? That you ask me concerning these things. And he said to me, if I had asked you how many dwellings are in the heart of the sea or how many springs are at the source of the deep or how many ways are above the firmament, or which are the exits of hell, or which are the entrances of paradise. Perhaps you would have said to me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet did I descend into hell, nor did I ever ascend into heaven, nor did I enter paradise. But now I have asked you only about fire, and wind, and the day, things through which you have passed and without which you cannot exist. And you have given me no answer about them. And he said to me, you cannot understand the things which, you cannot understand things with which you have grown up. How then can you vessel how, how then can your vessel comprehend the way of the most high for the way of the most high is created immen immensurable and how can one who is corrupt in the corrupt world understand the way of the incorruptible when his when when i heard this i fell on my face cut him to the quick didn't he? cut him a little bit didn't he it's a, it's a part. Just bear with me, guys. It's a part over here. I really want to get to. So we're just going to read. And it says here. And said to him, it would be better for us not to be here than to come here and live in ungodliness and to suffer and not understand why we suffer. He's trying to get some understanding. He believe in his word. He wants the, the scripture say, vengeance his mind, said the Lord, I will repay. He, he hey, that's what he's looking for, man. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> we're trying to come off this bottom and get to the top, or be above only and not believe, the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrow, all of that. And so we're saying, how long, oh great Lord? He answered me and said, once upon a time in the forest of trees, the palm, I'm sorry, the plain set forth and they made a plan and said, come, let us go and make war against the sea that it may recede before us and that we may make ourselves more forest. And in like manner, the waves of the sea also made a plan and said, come, let us go up and make war against the forest of the plain so that there also we may gain more territory for ourselves. But the plan of the forest was in vain, 
for the fire came and consumed it. Likewise, also the plan of the waves of the sea, for the sand stood firm and stopped him. If now you were a judge between them, which would you justify and which condemn? See, we have to learn how to judge, guys. We have to learn how to judge because we will be judges. We are judges. And the righteous mouths speak judgment. The Most High loves judgment. I answered and said, each has made a foolish plan. For the land is assigned to the forest and the sea is assigned a place to carry its waves. He answered me and said, you have judged rightly. John 7, 24. John 7, 24. You have judged rightly, but why have you now judged so in your own case? He said, have you not judged so in your own case? For as the land is assigned to the forest and the sea to its waves, so also those who dwell upon the earth can understand only what is on the earth and he who is above the heavens can understand what is above the height of the heavens mm -hmm. then I answered and said I beseech you my lord why have I been endowed with the power of understanding Wait a minute. Let me stand right for y'all guys. Okay. Endow with the power of understanding, for I did not wish to inquire about the ways above, but about those things that we daily experience. Why Israel has been given over to the Gentiles as a reproach? That's the question he had all them years ago. That's the question we still have today. We got the answer. We just got to do it. It's something we have to do. We got to get right. And then it's going to flip flop. It's already happening. Why the people whom you loved has been given over to godless tribes and the Torah of our fathers has been made of no effect and the written commandments no longer exist. And why we pass from the world like locusts and our life is like a mist and we are not worthy to obtain mercy. He answered me and said, if you are alive, you will see. That's what I was telling y'all guys. If we're alive, we're going to see. But uh, if it's a hundred year curse and it's just getting started, a lot of us will not see. We might see it in the vision like Martin Luther King, see the mountaintop or something, you know, but um, we may not get there. <laughs> you know what I mean? May not get there with you. You know what I mean? But if we go to sleep before, don't worry about it. We're going to get up. We're coming back. He answered me and said, if you are alive, you will see. And if you live, you will often marvel because the world is hastening swiftly to an end. For it will not be able to bring the things that have been promised to the righteous in their appointed times, because this world is full of sadness and infirmities. For the evil about which you ask me has been sown, but the harvest of it has yet to come. If therefore that which has been sown is not reaped, and if the uh, and if the place where the evil has been sown does not pass away, the field where the good has been sown will not come. For a grain of evil seed was sown in Adam's heart from the beginning and how much fruit of ungodliness it has produced until now and will produce until the time of threshing comes. Consider now for yourself how much fruit of ungodliness a grain of evil seed has produced. When heads of good grain without number are sown, how great a threshing floor they will feel. We almost there, guys. Really, I might want to skip over there and come back to this. 
Okay, let's skip over here. Um, they're giving some end time signs. Okay. So let's, let's start at verse 4, chapter 4, 51 right here. They prayed and said, Do you think that I shall live until those days? Or what will take place in those days? He answered me and said, Concerning the signs about which you asked me, I can tell you in part, but I was not sent to tell you concerning your life, for I do not know. See, that lets you know that angels don't know everything. Only the Most High Yah knows everything, and Yahshua. Okay, so that means Satan doesn't know everything. They know in parts just like us. We know in parts and prophesy in parts. Whatever he tells us, whatever he reveals to us, or whatever we he allows us to figure out. So the angel that came to him was only sent to tell him certain things. Other stuff he didn't know nothing about. That's above my pay grade is what he was telling him. 5.1. Now concerning the signs, behold, the days are coming when those who dwell on earth shall be seized with great terror. We're in those days, guys. We are in those days. And that's the same as... Uh, Psalms 91, right? We went over that. Shall be seized with great terror and the portion of truth shall be hidden and the land shall be barren of faith and the sun shall suddenly shine forth at night and the moon during the day. Now the moon has been shining in the day for 10, 20 years now. I've been noticing that. Now we have other moons here as well shining in the day and at night. And unrighteousness shall be increased beyond what you yourself see and beyond what you heard of formerly. And the region which you now see ruling shall be waste and untrodden. See, it's the revelation fulfilling. And men shall see the land desolate. But in the most high, I'm saying, but if the most high grants you li live, you shall see the earth thrown into confusion after the third ellipsis, dot, dot, dot. After the third what, brother? Five, five. Blood shall drip from the wood and the stone shall utter its voice. See, we've been hearing the booms. We've been hearing the. The loud cracks and the little screams, uh, rivers and stuff turning to blood. What does it say right here? Blood shall drip from the wood and the stone shall utter its voice. The peoples shall be troubled and the atmospheres shall be changed. That's what we've seen, guys. With the chemtrailing and all that, with the CERN and the... And the um, that other thing with all the antennas, I, I can't think of the name right now. Uh, harp, yeah. And then uh, them blowing holes in our atmosphere and trying to bring things up on the earth. The atmospheres shall change. Five, six. And one shall reign whom those who dwell on earth do not expect. And the bird shall fly away. Does it sound like the devil going to reign? Okay. Five, seven. And the sea of Sodom shall cast up fish. And one whom the many do not know shall make his voice heard by night. And all shall hear his voice. There shall be chasms also in many places and fire shall often break fire shall often break out and the wild beast shall roam beyond their hunts and women shall bring forth monsters. All this is happening now. 
Now, back in, the, in the, a few years ago, when I saw the women should bring forth monsters, I was like, man, it's some fake mess. Now I understand it. Because those who take the beast mark, they're going to bring forth Nephilim. As it changes your DNA, it's going to change your baby's DNA. You're not going to be perfect in your, in your genetics and all your generations like Noah was. You're not going to be left behind. Shall be chasms also in many places. And fire shall often break out. And the wild beast shall roam beyond their haunts. And women shall bring forth monsters. And salt water shall be found in the sweet. And all friends shall fight one another. Then wisdom shall hide itself. And understanding shall withdraw itself. I'm going to say, withdraw into its treasury. And it shall be sought by many, but shall not be found. And unrighteousness and unrestraint shall increase on earth. And one country shall ask its neighbor has righteousness or anyone who does right pass through. And it will answer no. And at that time, men shall hope, but not obtain. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. These are the signs I am permitted to tell you. So some things he may have knew more. This is what he was sent to tell. You know what I'm saying? And he's going to keep he following orders. No more, no less. Permitted to tell you. And if you pray again and weep as you do now, and fast for seven days, you shall hear yet greater things than these. We're going to stop right there at 513, guys. It's beautiful. Women should bring forth monsters. Hey, these things are going to start changing. Everyone who takes to be smart. And I was just letting people know, man, you know, I've cut ties with a lot of family, a lot of friends, family, and associates. Anyone who takes to be smart, we're done. I got to be like Samuel when he cut ties with Shaul. Can't pray with you no more. Can't associate with you. Can't see you no more. We're done. I've had a lot of family that died from the vax. None of them died from the COVID. I've not had one family member to die from COVID. I've had a lot of family members to get the COVID. Zero died from it. Almost everybody who's taken the vax has died from it. This is your host. Brian Anthony, Binya with Beyond Babbitt. Sam, stay safe, be smart. Stay prayed up, have faith. It's God who healeth all your sickness, diseases, and all your broken bones. Shalom, shalom. Till the next time, peace and blessings. Love y'all family. We're in this together. Amen.